If I did a video of Decepticon War Crimes and Transformers Prime, it would be much longer than this. Of course we want the Autobots to win the war, there's no doubt about that, when Megatron was going to exterminate all life on Earth. I do not hate the Autobots, let's make that clear now. And the worst crimes are certainly committed by the Decepticons when you have Shockwave making monster experiments from prisoners. However, it is fun to analyze the Autobots' hypocrisy, because they would so readily tell you that they are good and honorable people, while the Decepticons are not. Cybertronians may not have war crimes defined the same way as we do on Earth, but they are intelligent and thinking beings who talk about right and wrong, so they can sort out things like torture is bad, and so is killing prisoners or other defenseless beings. Autobots look to Optimus as their moral leader, and they try to follow his example, but do they fail? Oh yes, even Optimus is not innocent of endorsing a few war crimes. Autobots do bad things, but they do not even realize it and acknowledge it. The point of this video is to identify those times, and it may help you gain new insight on what we call heroic in media and if it deserves to be called heroic. Here's a basic run-through of some war crimes, some immoral no-nos for anyone to do regardless of their side. Killing or hurting defenseless or surrounding combatants, attacking non-combatants or civilians, torturing, taking hostages, and using poison. I will try to go through episode by episode to find as many examples as I can. You may even remember something I missed. Not every act of violence or kill is a war crime, because in war violence is permissible to achieve a military goal. Like the Autobots can morally attack the Decepticon warship or kill soldiers as they try to kill them. As I go through this video, people may hear my points about Viacon treatment that I have made before. They are important to make because Viacons are proven to have individual sparks slash souls and express emotions and individuality. They are people equal to any named character, even if they look the same. Let's talk about minor Viacons and Decepticon Energon Mines. Decepticon Energon mines would be military targets for the Autobots in order to stop the Decepticons from getting a fuel advantage. The Energon is also food for the Autobots' survival. However, Optimus had labeled minor Viacons specifically as Servant Class, not Warrior Class. That was a Decepticon Minor. Servant Class, not Warrior Class. He makes a distinction for why they should be less hostile to this type of Viacon. Minor Viacons are never sent out to battle in TFP, they only stay in mines, but they will defend the mine with weapons if attacked. Does this mean then, that Minor Viacons are non-combatants? When Autobots enter Energon mines, they brutally murder the Minor Viacons instead of wounding them. They always kill instead of incapacitating. In the worst cases, Autobots bomb the mines and kill all non-combatants instead with no chance to surrender, no evacuating miners before setting off the bomb. Examples will be further discussed through the episodes. This behavior begins in Darkness Rising, and what the show really does is claim these are non-combatants but make the Viacons look as capable and menacing as possible to justify what is done to them. These are not warriors, they only use their tools to defend themselves if attacked. If given a choice, sometimes they'll just run away. They are smaller than regular Viacons in fact, so the Autobots are annihilating small weak workers. Moral behavior does not come naturally to Optimus' warriors, and they need to be reminded. In Darkness Rising Part 3, their human comrade Agent Fowler is captured by the Decepticons, and Bulkhead does not initially want to help him or report the incident, leaving him to his fate until it's pointed out that Fowler could tell the Decepticons all Autobot secrets. Oh well. Oh well? Seriously? Fowler's a jerk. Whoa! Whether you like the guy or not, the Decepticons may have him. And Agent Fowler knows your location. Similar behavior by Bulkhead occurs in Operation Breakdown, when he refuses to help Team Prime rescue a Decepticon captured and being tortured and examined by humans, on the basis that he doesn't like the individual personally. Bulkhead is only swayed to save Breakdown later by the idea he will get a rematch fight he will win this time. We will rescue Breakdown. What? Optimus, you can't be serious. Mech can melt him down for all I care. Let the cons rescue their own. Bulkhead. Optimus, I'm sorry. I just can't do it. I support your choice. W -w -what? what? Given your history with Breakdown, your judgment may be clouded and thus jeopardize the mission. I am not rescuing him, okay? Not now, not ever. Duh, you don't need to bromance him, Bulk. You just need to beat him! Uh, 
What? No rescue, no rematch. The next moment is Bulkhead's willful killing of a Viacon soldier in Darkness Rising Part 3. In a long battle with Viacon, Bulkhead decides he will rip out his intestines. He plans to do it and warns Miko to look away, but if Bulkhead was able to tear out his guts, he could have equally punched the Viacon's stomach until he collapsed alive and too hurt to continue to fight. One may argue the necessity for death instead of knocking out to keep a Viacon quiet. However, Bulkhead inexcusably murders Fake Starscream in Armada. He then beats Fake Starscream to death despite his helpless gestures and never reports what he has done to his own faction. Instead of recognizing his horrible act, Bulkhead verbally justifies to himself that Starscream deserved his death. You left me no choice. This may be considered an act of execution outside of a court carried out by an individual, which is a war crime. In Masters and Students, as savage as it was for Bumblebee to rip out Skyquake's guts, Skyquake had initiated the attack and was trying to kill them. Bumblebee was given less options to stop such a large and powerful foe, so I could pass him for going for the kill. What are your thoughts? In Conjob, brutal fighting tactics are shown by Wheeljack before he is exchanged with Makeshift. Imagine cutting off the arm of a human, and then smacking another human with it. Team Prime encourages Makeshift's behavior, and to shoot a wounded Decepticon soldier in an amused manner. You missed one. One part of this episode is debatable, but if the Autobots did it, it really is immoral. Did the Autobots set off Makeshift's grenade, or was it accidentally set off? I think it was intentional, because if the grenades were so easy to set off, Wheeljack would have already exploded himself, being thrown around as much as he is and getting into crashes. And the Autobots are a small team against a greater Decepticon army. They would take out as many enemies as they could at any given chance. They also blow up Viacons quite often. They were willing to use the Spark Extractor to mass kill the entire army under Optimus' command even. The Spark Extractor? Optimus, are you certain you want to travel down this path? While I am deeply reluctant to deploy a weapon of this caliber, especially one forged by Decepticon hands, this may be our only chance to end the war once and for all. With Wheeljack around, I think he would have suggested activating the grenade. In Triage, Wheeljack calls this a Wrecker trick, and Bulkhead and Wheeljack are Wreckers who were responsible for throwing Makeshift out of the base. In Triage, Wheeljack did place a grenade inside a living Minicon so that when Laserbeak would return to Soundwave, both he and Soundwave would have died. Situation's right for an old Wrecker trick. Uh, I'm not sure I follow. Sooner or later, Soundwave's gonna come looking for his pet. We let him reunite and return to base, pack in a live grenade. The first time Wave reaches inside, he trips the pin and kaboom. I think the Autobots set off Makeshift's grenade to murder a dangerous shapeshifter and kill as many Decepticons as possible, maybe even Starscream, because it's to their advantage. Makeshift was defeated and defenseless, and they activated a bomb on him, which is 100% murder. In an episode like Speed Metal, Optimus easily lets Knockout flee, although he had just tried to take a prisoner. We'll see less mercy is given to Viacons in any of their attempts to flee a battlefield. Moving on, in Sick Mind, RC and Bumblebee encounter Comatose Megatron. RC's first reaction is to kill Megatron in his sleep. We can understand her fear of Megatron if he were able to return in full health. However, to kill a defenseless and wounded foe is a war crime. The sole reason RC is discouraged is because Megatron has the cure for Optimus' disease in his mind. Once they get the cure, however, RC does attempt to kill Megatron anyway, although she would know Megatron would be saved by the Decepticons now standing in the room. Rock Bottom shows another surprising act of cruelty. The Autobots RC and Bulkhead leave Starscream to die, and we know this because they could not have expected Megatron would save him. After RC witnessed Megatron about to execute Starscream, she has no reason to believe Megatron would change his mind. Bulkhead and RC leave Starscream to lift up a too heavy collapsing ceiling that will be sure to crush him. The Autobots did this to get Bulkhead out of a life-threatening situation, but then they walk away without offering assistance to Starscream. They believe he deserved such a fate, for he would have done the same to Bulkhead. 
However, the Autobots claim to be better than the Decepticons, so surely they cannot just copy their behavior. They could have come up with any plan to save Starscream, and in fact, it would have also been a great opportunity to capture him and get Decepticon secrets. At the end of Rock Bottom, both Autobots long to just kill the helpless Decepticons right then. Wrecker style, of course Bulkhead wishes they had grenades. Jack the Human asks them if that's what Optimus would do, and RC agrees no. We could finish him, here and now. Shame we didn't bring any grenades. Would Optimus finish them? No, he probably wouldn't. Not like this. Everyone decides no one should rescue them either, but still, they have knowingly left Starscream to die. They could assume Megatron would live, but not Starscream. We can understand Arcee's rage for Starscream in Partners. She looks at this prisoner and learns the shocking news that he has killed her friend. She wants to punch him, but then remembers she can't morally harm a defenseless prisoner. But she wants to murder him in a way that will not get her in trouble. She forces Starscream at gunpoint to take off his cuffs so they can fight, because a fight to the death to her is seen as noble murder. She is trying to force the prisoner to let himself be killed, which is pretty messed up. Starscream flips the table by pretending to be helpless to get RC to come close and to wound her. RC ruins all chance of cooperation with Starscream, and when he wouldn't have tried to kill her before, now he tries out of spite. RC summons the strength and speed to win the fight, and is about to get what she wants, killing Starscream. However, Bumblebee appears as a witness and his disappointed look halts her. This demonstrates the emotional, imperfect side of the Autobots. They aren't always moral because they can't help themselves. RC can't help but throw herself at Arachnid because it's hard not to be so furious at the one who killed a friend in front of you. But the Autobots make more efforts to be moral than the Decepticons would. Oh joy, I have reached Stronger Faster, the episode where Ratchet takes drugs and becomes unhinged. An Autobot tortures a Decepticon on screen. Additionally, a Decepticon who didn't want to fight and tried to flee for his life. Drugged Ratchet stops him and readily decides to burn his face for information. Of course, this Viacon is a person, a fear and sass with a soul of his own. Why the big rush? Just trying to get as far as I can from the Autobot stink. Does your boss know you have a potty mouth? No! No! Oh, that's all I know! Really? <laughs> However, when Optimus stops Ratchet, he only shows minimal anger. The rest of the Autobots hardly show horror that Ratchet burned the eyes of a non-combatant. Like imagine human Ratchet doing that to another human and receiving only a mild lecture. But if you watch this scene, Optimus only gives him a calm sentence or two statements about the torture. That was a Decepticon Minor, Servant Class. Not warrior class. Autobots do not inflict harm unless all other options have been exhausted. It is what separates us from the Decepticons. If Optimus sees this as so immoral, Ratchet should really have been punished for what he did, even on drugs. This should be a big deal, but perhaps it did not seem so awful when done on a Viacon. If Ratchet had tortured Knockout this way, maybe then Ratchet would have gotten in more trouble and seen Optimus's anger. Maybe, for it's hard to know if Optimus is excusing this war crime only because it's his old friend out of his mind on drugs. Cruel acts of the Autobots are when they are willing to leave Starscream injured and energon deficient until he proved useful to them. In Ratchet's case as a doctor, you would think he had a duty to help all those in need, but as a spiteful character, he would leave the enemy to bleed. Orion Pax Part 2 and Crossfire are the episodes when the Autobots leave the neutral Starscream without aid until he seemed to have useful information. I mean, at least they then just shoot him in his helplessness. Just gonna say that Optimus is kinda mean to Starscream triangulation, pulling a blaster on the cuffed prisoner who can't transform. But he doesn't really harm Starscream. In Toxicity, Bulkhead sets a trap that includes a grenade to explode a toxic substance onto an Insecticon which at least by Earth standards is a war crime. The episode Hurt has Wheeljack and Miko doing immoral acts. They set out the murder heart shell for nearly killing Bulkhead, an act of pure vengeance to make themselves feel better. When Autobots do this, they see it as justice, although their murderous act will not actually promote good. 
Bulkhead would not heal any faster. This is only because they want to hurt the bot who hurt their friend, a primal feeling of rage. We understand it, but Wheeljack wants to draw out Hardshell for a one-on-one -on -one satisfying fight for a satisfying murder. To get Megatron's attention, Wheeljack murders a mine of non-combatant minor vehicons and explodes it. Wheeljack and Miko do end up killing Hardshell and many other Insecticons, having their revenge. Though Miko's quote about what they have done is notable. Welcome to the Wreckers, kid. You did Bulkhead proud. Then why don't I feel any different? The rest of the show makes the Autobots struggle more for survival, making more of what they do justifiable. They always take a certain glee in killing vehicons in battle, but one may argue it is their own coping mechanism during war, or just their intense hatred for the Decepticon faction that has killed many of their friends. When the Autobots killed the laboratory of Predacons, they did it unaware that each Predacon was a person. They believed that these were dangerous animals that would have surely killed them and humankind, so the Autobots saw killing them as moral. Even if they had known the Predacons were people, the Autobots likely still would have killed them in order to protect themselves and others. After all, Megatron still would have ordered the Predacons to attack. If you and I are all that stand between these monsters and the natives of this planet, then by all means, blow these beasts back to the Rust Age. In Minus One, the Autobots capture Soundwave to interrogate him. After only a few minutes, Optimus threatens Soundwave with torture. For the sake of the natives of this planet, tell us what Megatron is attempting to build before we are forced to rely upon less civil methods of interrogation. It did not take so long before that option arose, and funny enough, it is believed in real life that torture is not an effective interrogation tactic because the stress caused by torture will most often affect parts of the brain associated with memory and force victims to lie or repeat information they heard from their torturers. I mean, Soundwave is a determined Decepticon and may never speak even if tortured, but when someone is tortured, they are very likely to provide false information. It is wrong for media to continuously show torture as an effective method of obtaining information. Someday, a show should give us failure, such as the information turning out to be untrue. Overall, the Autobots do more good in the universe than Decepticons. As I made this video, I saw way more Decepticon crimes within the Transformers Prime episodes. All we need to recognize is that the Autobots are not saints, and if they say they are, they are hypocrites. But at least the Wreckers would tell you they are not saints. They are proud of their brutality and how it gets things done. Wreckers especially, but all Autobots feel excused to do whatever it takes to kill Decepticons because they view them as so dangerous. The sooner they kill the Decepticons, the sooner the war ends, humans are no longer at risk, and less Autobots are killed. It's a survival thing, and a way to protect their Earth. They don't want to let someone like Megatron live and have the chance to escape prison. Which is why when Optimus defeats Megatron in battle, he doesn't try to capture him, but tries to kill him. They will kill Viacons at any chance because killing is a good way to silence the enemy, not set off alarms, and not ruin their plans. It is very easy to kill Viacons too when they don't make pained expressions or look like individual people. But think about being a Viacon yourself, how terrible and evil the Autobots would look to you. There are many Decepticons out there who don't see themselves as bad. If you watch my video explaining the Decepticon cause, you will actually see they were oppressed people fighting for basic rights. The Autobot faction was the one full of privileged people who benefited from child slavery basically. Not every Decepticon is a Megatron who wants to destroy Earth. They can be just as emotional and vengeful when an Autobot kills their friends. This perspective is briefly shown in one of the Transformers Prime comics. So if Autobots and Decepticons are constantly hating each other and getting revenge for killed friends, this cycle doesn't end. Wheeljack, the one who enjoys explosive devices. What can I say, Chief? I'm uncouth. Kaboom. Yo. Can I come with? Why not? <laughs> 